In terms of clothing, there's a lot. There's two things. One is identity, and one is priority. Where is it in our levels of priority, in terms of our clothing, and then also identity? How does it play into our identity and who we are? Because at the end of the day, our clothing is our identity. As human beings, regardless of what religion, race, culture, whatever it is, it defines for us our identity. So we have to ask the question, what are we trying to define? That's one question. And the second thing is the, the, the priority. So in terms of the, the priority, and I'll start there, we really have to first, before we start even discussing what is it that we should wear as Muslims or how should we wear or you know uh, the uh, male or female men or women how we're supposed to to be we have to ask where is that in our priorities and it's interesting you mentioned you know that you had interviewed um, somebody who's a, uh, a bikini model who also prays five times a day and one of the things that I use as, a, as an example when I mention people are priority I say what's more important your dress or your prayer so what's more important for, is it is a person at a better spiritual state if they wear a full hijab or even niqab but they don't pray, as opposed to somebody that doesn't necessarily wear hijab, but they, but they pray five times a day. In terms of spirituality, that person who prays five times a day is at a better, in a better spiritual state than that person who does not pray, because the prayer is more important. So if we give too much focus to the outward while forgetting the more, the more important things like the, the prayer, which is part of the outward, then we're losing our sense of priority. Now that doesn't justify the other end of the spectrum that says, oh, well, I pray five times a day, so it doesn't really matter about what I wear outwardly. Or for the, for the, for the men, the same thing too. If I'm not wearing clothing properly, but I'm praying five times a day, that's what's important. It doesn't negate the fact that we do have to give focus to our dress. So that's the level of priority. Where, where a person's able to see that priority is through studying and through studying the deen. Once we study the deen and we understand what is obligated upon us, then now we can go to formulating our identity. If we're trying to formulate our, our identity but not based on the Quran and the Sunnah, then, then it's, going to be, it's going to be skewed. So we have to go back to the Qur'an and Sunnah, studying our Fard al ain understanding what Allah has obligated us to do through His book and through the Sunnah of His Messenger وسلم, and then now define our dress. What, how do we dress? So once we understand our Fard al ain once we understand our priorities um, through the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then we can define how it is that we dress. Because there's nothing specific that you have to dress like this. We know what a woman has to wear, we know what a man has to wear. Then we can go look at the cultures and see what it is that we're going to, you know, how we're going to dress. Um, I do think that, that people should be very conscious and ask those questions and not just dress the way our parents dressed. You know, each generation, each family is in a very specific scenario, very specific situation. So the way the ladies in Sudan or in Egypt or in South Africa, the way they dress may not be uh, culturally relevant here in the, in the U.S. or in other uh, Western nations. So we can, we can take from the culture of the land and, uh, and then apply it to our Sharia standards.